Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here to another fantastic episode of Console Smite. PlayStation 4 Europe is what we're getting into, and they're going to hope to get into the World Championships. You can make it, you can go, you can buy tickets, and you can buy a digital loot pack. You get 1,500 gems, you get a whole bunch of fun skins, the new Soul skin, etc., the new Nox skin, excuse me, etc., a lot of the fun stuff, so make sure you take a look. Also take a look at Anatoly. He's my analyst, and he's right there. Week 11 in PS4 EU, we got OCG up against VG as a very important set for Alcold Gaming to win, especially in the previous set where Ariel Arise are now sitting at 8-2. Ariel Arise certainly have arisen to the moment here as they continue to sit themselves cleanly at number one. VGS Gods, a little bit of a different story there across the way, but Alcold certainly have some talents that they can take the battlefield with. We'll jump into picks and bans in just a moment. Anatoly, my question here, what do you expect? I'm expecting a lot of action between both of these teams. Obviously, OCG still battling at their shot at High Res Expo, but that doesn't mean VGS are going to be out of it in terms of playing spoiler. They're definitely going to be coming in with a lot of shots fired during picks and bans. Picks and bans right now. Drop my pen. We'll see if they drop their picks here. The bans coming out. Both. Something that I think will continue to become standard right now, probably a little bit different easing into that world. Thor and the Isis going to be banned here, just walking down the tier list. No King Arthur either. VGS Gods now one last ban. They're going into the Ola run and out cold before we jump into picks. We're going to take a look towards... Probably the set. No, it's actually the Amaterasu. Uh, another popular pick recently with some of the changes. A lot of players are realizing the true power of this what? late game Amaterasu, but a complete curveball out of VGS, not first picking this set, going for the Party Monkey instead. First pick Hunbats, I think, is not the the greatest of looks. Now, taking it away from out cold in the conversation I have, but there are other characters that come to mind, most notably Persephone left out of the draft, obviously set, like you mentioned, out of the draft as well. So a number of power picks not really gone here, not just one or across the way. Bats Horus Osiris is going to be the first half for VGS gods. OCG looking at Ruler, Ken, and Robin. Very aggressive are these junglers, but the Robin should be coming in firing from the get-go, where uh, Hunbats kind of takes a little bit of time to ramp up to that level 5 point. A little bit slow in the jungle clear compared to the Robin. Needs the blink to be super effective to be a little bit of a surprise factor. Two of the bands coming out here from OCG, the Jean Cui and the Soul, across the way for VGS, the Morgan, and the execute friendly Achilles. The OCG going into the Merlin. Still Persephone available and ready to be taken. Not the choice here. And the set as well, if they really, really want it, but instead going for more team fighting presence. I like the idea here. Horus has some sustain, as does the hell. Osiris has anti-healing with his ultimate. Not only that, the judgment tether to be able to limit a lot of the damage potential. Uller's looking for the burst potential, but when he's tethered, a lot of less damage. Shibalanke here selected right before the Sun Wukong. An interesting draft. Power levels down. So we're not playing in the Uber territory for my Pokemon fans out there. We're playing a couple of more, uh, more realistic as we leave Persephone and set back at base. Tom Battinger here bringing you the call. Anatoly Alexeyanok here still bringing you the analysis. And Doug, of course, showing you the action as we get into it, VGS gods, a bevy monster, and Vixori looking for the proxy farm. Ooh, okay. It takes, takes a bit of time for them to group that whole wave, but I think this is a very safe call. Osiris can do this by himself. The fact that Horse is here is just for added safety measure to give Bevy an escape route if there was more than one member showing to contest. Yeah, just extra, like you said, extra safety, the group up factor. The invades, not exactly something we are unaware of we've seen it a number of times and so these teams certainly aware that that can be in the cards so a little extra safety no problem out cold no response to it however anatoly they were just kind of gonna walk their own way play their own game vgs coming in doing their homework already because look at the route that drizzle took he started speed went straight to red helped out purple by himself, whereas on the flip side, Gunter, he went to speed into the back camps. And because of what Drizzle did on the Hunbats, that proxy farm of stripping of the blue goes at the distance. In the mid lane, some good damage onto Ecliptics, but out of nowhere, Vixuri shows up. Gunter, enough 
chase away the opposition there, though. That looked like a nice little engagement for VGS guys. But they were unable to kind of confirm it. Well, they got the beats at the very least out of Ecliptic. So this hell that needs the safety early game slightly vulnerable. Gunter, without the blink, needs to look for that flank. But Drizzle acting kind of like that mobile ward. So he'll be <laughs> spotted from a mile away. Oh, for sure. So the Hunt Bats jungle. I love it. I'll always love it. But first pick, love it. That's a different story. Maybe it's because they were worried about Gunter picking it up for himself, something that OCG has run before in the past. I'm not sure how many games they like it where they're going to first pick it, though. Right now, Gunter, which is he had any other pick, still willing to turn around. And here comes the bite back. Just Lion is going to miss the stun. There's a teleport for the monkey on the other side, and safe and sound. So a nice little play there from Lion. But missing that axe is not going to bode well. Definitely not, but at least it forced out the beats as well from both of these junglers looking for the defensive plays and the offensive one. OCG and VGS not on the board quite yet, but with some of those invades earlier, I think VGS can start using that as momentum. Pings on the blue buff. I think Gunter's prepared if there is going to be another invade. Sorry, walking past it. Still interesting. Has Bevy here, but the three on two might dissuade the Osiris and the Horus combo, and it will. It's looking for the steal. And Fatality Fire is not going to pick it up because it was stolen away. This Spirit Fleal from a distance. See, that's the beauty of the way Bevy played that. He was posturing as if he wanted to go in, but no, he's just going to keep the get busy from a safe distance, allow Gunter to do the dirty work. He still was in position to see the health bar, I think, of the blue buff, and he timed his Spirit Flail perfectly. Wonderful. So the invade comes successful. VGS God still tied up. Couple of hundred cold. That's pretty much the result of a couple of invades there. But nothing really to hang a hat on. And it's not even the gold that you're getting for yourself. It's, it's more about the experience a little bit, but the denial of the MP5, the cooldown reduction for Fatality Fire as a Sun Wukong player. It's so important to get that MP5 because if you're not controlling the Totem of Kuas, which you're not, and you're not getting the blue buff, you're going to have to back to base more often than you're used to. Just lying. Going to be just lying in a casket. VGS gods come through and grab the first blood. Profits go to Ecliptics off of a fantastic assist from Victory and a little bit of drizzle. Great setup, though, from the horse for sure. It's funny to see just lying in the mid lane. This is a hunter player that... Accelerated quite well, I would say, at that Splice Invitational. A lot of funny shenanigans with him and a couple of the Smite Minor League players. I think yeah. him and Meerkat were kind of going back and forth at it in the long lane, but still playing the Uller in the mid lane. So he's still kind of comfortable, but I don't think he's used to this much action as opposed to being in the long lane where it's normally 1v1. Yeah, it's so much safer right now. That's part of the reason you see this change of the meta and some of the higher levels of play, what OCG is doing here, putting Raiden over there in the long lane, is because of how much safer it is. You can go put a mage there, like usually we see a Thoth, Isis if she gets through, and just farm, and then you're level 17 when everybody else is level 14. Because of the safety and the, the solo aspect of it, Certainly a lot less action, like Tolly was saying. Now Cold Gaming doing a good job adapting to this aggression, but the Fear No Evil not even going to make an impact, surprisingly. Uh, yeah, very interesting choice there. The Fear No Evil seemed to be right in the middle. Wasn't sure if Drizzle wanted to go in or out. Sort of looking for his teammates. His teammates not really sure whether they wanted to go in or out. So they kind of decided to stick it back, peel it forward and then look elsewhere. So a defensive Fear No Evil is how I will phrase that. I like the <laughs> idea, though, because Dragon King's only level four. No Cataclysm to really worry about, but yep. could be worried about it if you're Marky Sparky. He does have the beads still available, Ninja Tabai for a lot of mobility. He should be fine if he does get ganked, considering that he is the Shibalanke. He could even time his dash, probably, if he can like sense the blink out to get that second half of the immunity on the dash. An interesting choice for McSorry to go into the Warrior Tabby. I mean, Ninja Tabby has been buffed to the point where we see Hunters pick it up kind of finally, but previously, really the only ones that were going into this option on the regular were the Warrior supports because it provides some additional mana. The difference between 
20 power on a support Horus is not really interesting to me. The 100 mana, though, absolutely is. Synergizes a little bit with the Transcendence, if you will stack that up. Great Sacred Monkey connecting nice out of Drizzle, but I don't think he's going to get out of that one. No, oh, knows he's gone. Six away to the tower. Sparky Sparky, going to get jumped on, avoids the damage outright, and the follow-up. A nice beads out of Marky. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, I don't even think he was in range. I agree. But I that's a I'm fine with that play. You I'm fine with I mean? that too. You don't necessarily know if they're in range. Yeah. And if you have to react to it, that even little stutter step yep. of you getting mini stun could allow maybe Gun to Warrior to catch up. And then with your beads being down, if he can catch up and he has the speed buff, he hits you with the prod onslaught, all of a sudden you're slowed. You no longer have your dash. Your <laughs> ultimate doesn't stun anymore as Shibalanke, right. so you're definitely not getting out of that one. Over here, back to the soul lane matchup. Heavy monster. Fatality fire. What's your take on the beverage man on the Osiris? I mean, he's getting a lot of assistance to start off the game between having the Horus rotate to give him that proxy farmed, two blue buffs stripped away. OCG, though, feeling frisky. Easy. Yeah, it's going to be easy. Hell does not exactly come equipped really steal this away. They got it, but at what cost? They lose two players. One to the Gold Fury, one to Ecliptics on the Hell. Not really worth the trade. A little cute play there from Victory. Not going to save his own red buff there. Oh, man. That was... Bad smite. That was bad smite. He tried to reset the goal, Fury, but I think his teammates were body blocking him on the backside as he was kind of backpedaling away from the action. You got to time your resets a little bit more accordingly, though. Earlier. A lot earlier. You can't be flirting with danger yeah, that Yeah, that's not... No. <laughs> In fact, you can use your rollout to do damage and leave at the same time. Maybe he used it earlier to do DPS? I'm not sure. Either way. Lesson learned. Hopefully. Totally will play devil's advocate. I respect it. I think there is. No, I don't. There is no conversation. You can't die to the gold fury in that situation, friends. A little bit rough there. There's a player with full HP! No need for two players to die. Because of it, though, our cold gaming will just about cut the lead down. A thousand gold separate our teams. VGS gods, so one and nine over the course of the season. Not exactly hyper successful. Out cold on the other hand, a little bit more. And this was important, I think, for OCG to at least get the Gold Fury because it stops VGS from getting it themselves to really blow this game out of proportion as we're seeing the rotation still in the soul lane. Bevy Monster should be fine with these rotations. A little bit of help there. VGS combining on a Fatality Fire. No ultimate available for the monkey, so that's big. But a great ultimate from Dragon King and a double kill for VGS gods. Looking for the blue buff after the fact. Here comes help from Victoria and the rest of the squad will trail. Two to the right. Fly into the left. Ah, doesn't have the range to find the knockup. Using the Mystic Rush to get away, Drizzle reads it the whole entire way. Again, the play for the Sacred Monkey working out here. VGS got still leading, stretching their lead to a 2,000 gold differential. Pyromancer will confirm that 2K number. Allow me to correct myself. More successful than I had alluded to in the past. Uh oh. Not one and nine. Three and six. So still have a little bit climb as far as overall win percentage, but VGS gods have been able to string together some victories here versus out cold, though a much different story. OCG definitely, I think, uh, one of the teams to look up to. Dragon King Jagia, I, has, I have talked about a lot. I love his particular play on the game. He's definitely the kind of outlier player out of out cold gaming in my opinion the way he's been able to peel offensively though i don't think this is the time for yeah. dragon king to look for these plays when you're on the back foot like this you're not winning team fights anytime soon there's a lot of aoe damage from vgs the hell the hunt bats even victory a little bit so ocg going in for it especially with fatality fires ultimate from previously he was a sitting duck and ocg taking some bad fights and more of this late game style with the Merlin and the Gap, but they have to survive the early game to get there. That said, 
early game is VGSs for sure. But Which only is 3, surprising, though. Right? It's extremely surprising. And what I'm saying is it's only 3,000. So out cold can kind of find their way into this one. Like you said, it's kind of the opposite of what you would expect to be happening when you look towards the shibby and the, and the hell. Because like Hunbats versus Robin, Robin should control that early game. Absolutely. Out cold looking to control the mid game, however. There you go. That's the play you need out of just line. Abuse the hell. No purification beads out of her. Going for a very glass cannon style build in Ooh, the, the mid lane with the two more. I like that idea. You get movement speed. You're able to chase down your opposition. Even healing yourself gives you extra movement speed for your teammates. So that's a good look, but not really respecting the CC chain. Dragon King makes a play with the Blink Cataclysm when Ecliptics had no beats up. The idea there for Ecliptics is, or you just gotta be more aware. One of the few characters that has a cleanse in the kit, and the cleanse is preemptive. You can cleanse yourself out of stuns on yourself. You, you have to uh, precast it. You've gotta yes. read the opponent, but guess what? If Geb blinks on you, He's probably going to Cataclysm. You got to wait it out as well. But if you're a Geb, hold that thought though, mid lane. Ooh, the miss. Coming up top, Heavy Monster will also find damage out of Gunter. Force out the ultimate. Player finds his way up north. VGS Gods now with a little window of opportunity. The jungle ultimate on cooldown. Gold Fury could be their decision to make. Raiden, again, is a burner, not a confirmer. Just Lion. Kind of half and half. Good poke on some fatality fire. Soul laner needs to back now. Teleport is available to come back into this one. Is Bevy even going to zone away just line? And any bit of mana you can use to get away the Uller helps VGS beat this aggressive on the left. Yeah, this is an all out dive. Here comes Victory blinking forward after the ultimate. They're going to be met by three different members of Out Cold Gaming. Players now focusing on the back end, not looking at the tower whatsoever. And it's Out Cold that are able to snap back. Gunter Warrior, no ultimate, no problem. But Bevy Monster dives the tier two tower. Just Lion wrapping around here as well. It's a four on four, and it's a re engagement one more time. Knock up onto Eclipsic, and he'll go to the base the hard way. Fatality Fire. Looking cute, feeling cute. Up into the ult, jumping on top of the tank, and the Jingu Bang coming up right about I am now. That's the kill number four for Out Cold Gaming. Three players sitting down. And Bevy's still here. OCG are low, so no gold scary totally, but the fight in their favor. Yeah, VGS gods got way too frisky, I think. Diving that tier one tower wasn't the worst call in the world, but going past the tier one, between the tier two, where you're leading the charge as a Shibalanke player, uncalled for. As yeah. a result, Bevy Monster dives to tier two just to kill a Geb to get something out of nothing, really. And then the rest of VGS gods are trying to help him get it out of that sticky situation. They overcommit, they lose three players in a situation where if they just bullied them out of the tier one tower, they can head immediately to Primal Fury, use all this health sustain, and then control this late game objective. I say it time to time, you gotta play your lead, make those aggressive plays, but you can't let your lead play you. Chase to a Phoenix, kind of exactly what we saw there, totally. VGS, like you said, you, you illustrated it perfectly. If you back off, you win. Yeah. If you don't, you lose. And this is the thing about VGS gods. Mechanically, they are great players, but I don't think that they're used to these winning positions to make the correct calls when it matters. Out Cold now going to fight. Victory will look for the leash, but Out Cold Gaming are here to take over. Primal Fury down to 10%. Full leash is good. Gunter with a kill. Three players chasing Gunter now, and he's going to be punished. So the one for one, kind of easy there. Jungle for mid lane mage. Cold Gaming running away from Bevy Monster. Level 13 Osiris, by the way. Doing damage to Zhagia. Yeah, he's kind of 1v3ing right now. Actually, now 2v3. Chasing is Marky Sparky on the left. We'll get one just line answering back. Now, no front line to really get away. I think that Marky Sparky might have bit off more than he can chew. A little bit. If he's got help from Vixuri, it's fine. But with the ultimate coming up for Fatality Fire, it's another one. Double kill for just Lion, and the second time in a row, we've seen VGS just out, outlast themselves. Should not have been there for that long. 
Now Fatality Fire in a 1v2. He doesn't have the ultimate to get away. Raiden needs to kind of bail him out, forcing out the Somersault. Right. And like you were talking about earlier, wow, Raiden's actually going to commit to this, forcing out the beads out of Drizzle should be a wash. And the two factors yet again that VGS are succumbing to by losing these fights is Ecliptix going down again. This is the foundation that's building VGS, the early lead, the hell sustain. Mm -hmm. The rotations of the blue buff stripping away there, finding those kills after the goal fear from OCG was a nice way to maintain that lead despite losing the objective. But now that they're in the driver's seat, or rather were in the driver's seat, they're kind of letting it slip through their fingers. And this is the difference between a team that is three and six like VGS versus a team like Ariel Arise that is eight and two. Mm. Ariel would make the more patient, methodical call where they don't let their lead play them. Grid coming out from Drizzle defensively. As Gunther did jump up onto the monkey. Cliptix gets jumped on and taunted. Just lying. Just doing his job. Two, four, and four now for the hell. She finds herself dead for another 24 seconds. Rough stuff there for the young lad. Team fights are just too scattered. Hell can never be left alone, especially when you're not tanky. Like if you're Hell solo lane and you're level 14 with two tanky items, you could be left alone. You're, it's up to you to keep yourself alive. But without health or defense, Ecliptix needs to be grouped up with his teammates. Different than number one, the Gold Fury that is. Out cold still are able to get it, this time with a little adversity. Three players chasing out the jungle. Robin, a shell shield is good, and he'll run out the easy way. Fatality, ultimate, jumps on the monkey. Jingo Bang available soon. There it is, not enough. The Master will, will finish him off. Trade for trade. Maybe he's owning three separate players. And that has been the lifeblood of VGS's team fight. Bebby occupying space and keeping three players under his thumb. Here's the rest of the team resurging. Bebby from a distance off of the slow from the Shibalanke. And the tier one tower in mid is gone. A similar story to the Gold Fury 10 minutes ago. Yet again, OCG secure it. They lose more members than they trade out for. And now they're losing the more important objectives, which is the positioning of their tier one, tier two tower. No longer available for escapes. BGS going to clear out the right side jungle and then probably look for a Pyromancer. You said something earlier, Anatoly, that I think really resonates here with the BGS. Now, they have three wins, three set wins, so they, they are not completely uninitiated with the idea. But a team like this that has lost twice as many games and they find themselves winning, it's definitely a moment where they go, uh, uh, okay, we're, we've got a lead against one of these good teams. What do we do with it? You know? And this is what's going to make them so much different for the next split, rather, or the next season, is just to be able to correct some of these mistakes, learn from the tapes, and try to correct those small mistakes. Because their early game is great. I like the way they played in the solo lane, finding two blue buff invades consistently, and then looking for the grouping up onto just line to punish this Uller early. It worked out for them, but the problem was when they had that lead, they just felt like they were immortal almost, and that's never the case in Smite, especially that early on. You continue to see that as they continue to make very similar plays here in the middle lane. This is not similar, but in the same vein. Out cold, kind of forcing themselves in the mid lane. Nice, nice, nice play from Hell. Dodging and weaving and cleansing some of the stuns on herself and her teammates. That's how the character needs to be played. Four on four, meet up in the mid lane with the Duel on the left side. Very slowly, VGS pushing up. Shibalaki will join the party after a back. And there's the dispersal. VGS looking for farm across the map, pushing out cold into their base. No longer level 12 is Ecliptix. Having that extra two level lead with more base health, more base protections, and also more cooldown reduction after finishing off that Spear of Desolation allows him to be more spam oriented and against OCG, still controlling the space that they really need to. And this is a good little confidence booster to survive that aggression. Right side, some aggression onto Outcold Gaming. Fire doing what he can, but 
Bevy and Drizzle ultimately find the tower. On the way, Ecliptics takes care of just Lion as they rotate here to the right-hand side. Vexori now going to land from to the skies, but it's only himself landing. Ecliptics trying to heal Drizzle, forcing out Fatality Fire on the left side, blinking in his Drizzle. Fear no evil, largely a whiff. Fatality Fire gets hit right there. Ecliptics with another kill, too, since the transition into this team fight. Right side, Drizzle going to be zoning away Gunther Warrior while everybody else goes under the tower. Shibalanke, eyes of the prize on the tower. The rest of the team pushes up forward. Ecliptix leading the way with Bevy Monster in front of her. Monster on the backside, intercepted! Gunther Warrior had an eye on the solo lane, but everyone turns around after the stop down from the Horus. And this is where Ecliptic's heal is really starting to pay off. Even with Raiden having Divine Ruin and the Brawler's Beat Stick out of Gunther, it's still not enough anti-healing for the out-of-combat healing. Like, Bevy was going towards the Phoenix. He took maybe three, four, tower shots there and still able to survive because of this high level hell now really well played and that's kind of what you look for when you select the hell we don't really know how the early game will go but if we get to 35 minutes we win the game slightly more complicated but a little honestly bit. not by much it also helps the fact that they plucked away just line during that rotation underneath a great pairing between ecliptics and Vixori, identifying yeah. the out of position line Mid lane, out cold gaming, on themselves aggressing. Quickly walk away, some curious pathing could have gotten them into some trouble. That mobility from the Hell Heal is really good, by the way. It used to be even more insane. Thankfully, been brought down a peg. VGS gods looking and finding the gold fury. Their solo laner distracting everybody. Really no concerns here for the Osiris unless he misses all of his abilities. That might be an issue there. Knocked up, but still tanky as all hell. Glad Shield, Boots, Blackthorn, Breastplate, Oni Hunter's Garb. Well equipped to fight the good fight. BGS God teleporting to the right-hand side and positioning around the Fire Giant. And this is not the most out of control lead. Like OCG are not behind that much where they can't contest the Fire Giant, but not when they're not this grouped up a little bit too scattered. Fire Giant almost down already. Yeah, 40% here and ticking. BGS God switching and looking for the team fight. Dragon King Jagia with a great ultimate, but a fear no evil to match. There's the kill. Ecliptix finds it. Good penetration on the tier two obsidian shard. Drizzle chased out, blinked away. Bird is good. Turn around and the turnaround. Vitality Fire wants nothing to do with that. Bevy Monster, on the other hand, forcing Raiden. One more time. All the way where that tier two tower in the soul lane used to stand was Bevy Monster chasing out Raiden. That's a very smart play when you can use your soul laner to isolate the huge team fighting AOE mage. Great yeah. plays from Bevy, really flexing this five item cost effective build. He doesn't really have that much magical defense. It's only the Oni Hunter's Garb, and you're only getting one stack of it when you're win the 1v1. Well, it's the passive that he's leaning on so much that Osiris passive allows him to be so tanky, even without the itemization. It's what allows him to take these ridiculous fights. Just lying in trouble. No ultimate available here for Bevy. He used it just earlier on, but honestly, no reason to stop either. Fire Giant goes down to VGS, and we're in their living room. This is a great play from VGS, the way they're utilizing their AOEs. That ultimate coming through from Drizzle catches the Geb dead in the middle. <laughs> and when you can force a Geb out of a team fight to the point where they're not the ones engaging with a blink cataclysm, it's not an effective ultimate from the right. He died so fast during that CC, he didn't even get the frenzy off on his own terms. It wasn't even used. He couldn't use it. And then we saw Fatality Fire having to retreat Ooh. underneath. We saw Raiden, the opposite Silaner, forced to retreat on the opposite end of the map going north. And this is where VGS are just pushing and pulling out cold gaming to their will. Tier two on the left side, the group for VGS one more time. Vixori walks in, not a care in the world. Out cold will not defend this structure. All about the birds, baby. 
Left side will be the target. All five players grouped up here. All five players, both sides, ultimates available. Drink going in, Drizzle, not wasting a single moment. Blink is good. Sets up one for Margie Sparky. The frenzy will enable the counter fight. Fatality Fire looking for Ecliptics all the way on the back line. Masters will, gets it, and the knockup on the teammates. It's a four on four, mid laners down. Victory goes in for round two. Here's Bevy Monster on the backside, trying to provide the push. The carry can't get in to target the Phoenix. Bevy one more time, zoning and owning, honestly. Warriors here, Marky needs to go in, but Fatality Fire stops him. There's the dash forward, one for the carry, two for the carry. And that's gonna be the bird at least. It definitely should be. Raiden is trying to make an impact, but he was getting zoned till high heaven. Bevy Monster is still on yeah. this Merlin. It's 2019, right. it could be in 2020, and he'll <laughs> still be on the Merlin. Really, I mean, that's where he's been the entire time, pushing out Merlin. Raiden has not been impactful in this right. game, and it's all Bevy's fault. I mean, Raiden could be having the best game possible, it's just that the, the, the lines have been drawn by Bevy Monster. He is walking towards you, and that's all you can you can you can't do anything about it. It's really unfortunate. It felt like OCG conceded the solo lane by last picking the Sun Wukong player and then leaving him on an island right, to right. lose blue buff repeatedly, not having that impact from your soul laner the same way. Now to be fair, some of these ox transformations have led to killing Ecliptics. I've liked it, yeah. Which was really good, but it could have been better if it wasn't that struggling from the early game. I wanted to ask you more about the Sun Bukong. Great Cold ultimate. Gaming does not want us to. Man dive. It's a knockup. Here comes Bevy Monster. Over the top. Ecliptix gets one. The surrender vote has been started. Dragon King goes down. 5-1-7 for the solo lane star. Bevy Monster on a tear, making sure nobody's thirsty. Handing out drinks. I think this is it here, Tom. It's BGS in a five on three, going down the throne room of OCG. BGS gods are here in the Titan squad. Vitality Fire provides some defense. We'll dash back some healing across the way. 50% to go on the big one. There's some damage from Just Lion. Fatality Fire forced back into the fountain on his own turn. Up down from the monkey. Drizzle goes down. 10% left. It's got to be all up to Bevy Monster. And Ecliptix gets the kill. And that'll be game 28-20 on the clock. VGS gods come out on top. A very impressive performance from the order side team when they are the ones that were struggling in the standings, but they didn't play like that. They played with a lot of confidence from the get-go. I love the proxying between the tier one, tier two into the blue buff invades. Once this hell kind of overcame her early game struggles, she really showed off that team fighting presence that we expect out of a hell. An interesting draft here from BGS Gods. Single target assassins, Victoria, Marky, and Bevy, and then Drizzle and Ecliptics doing some AoE stuff. I guess Marky half and half with the with the, uh, the dart spread. But even still, VGS Gods come through, make their cup work. And uh, if I'm uh, talking to anybody, I'm talking to Bevy Monster. Top of the damage charts and top of the zoning charts, they don't exist. But trust me, if they did, he'd be on the top. Fantastic stuff out of the solo lane. I can't say enough about him. Yeah, I agree. And also the healing coming through from Ecliptics. It was 20,000 healing that game. And the highest player damage from OCG was 23,000. So almost negating all of the damage. Great stuff either way. VGS gods up one to none. We'll be back after this. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Smite Console League.
Welcome back. I hope you're as excited as I am to return to another rousing bout of PlayStation fantastic European action. Anatoly here, ready to talk and ready to go in. Impressive performance from VGS Gods, and this is rather lackluster performance out of OCG. This is yeah. a must-win now for them. Ariel Arise, they won their previous set. They are at 8-2. and two. If OCG lose this set, they're out of it mathematically. Got to keep it above board. Picks and bans here for game number two on the way. OCG with the first pick and the first ban, and they're going to start doing just that. VGS will respond, and they'll get two choices instead of one. In case you're just joining us. The first bans coming out here. No Hun bats right away. First pick last game, so might as well make it first ban. Tony and I kind of lamented the fact, why would you first pick this? They won the game, so. And the ultimates from Drizzle were respectable. I like the positioning of it over the Geb. There were so many times where Dragon King was dead in the middle mm -hmm. of that Fear No Evil. He couldn't he do anything. Heavens. No Geb cleanses as well. And as a result, we always ask ourselves, is this first pick, first pick worthy? And they play the Hunbats like a first pick. Got to agree there. The Hell also banned away. Important to note that outside of it, it's pick time, baby. Oleron will grab the first seat selection here from OCG, and VGS Gods will go ahead and Where grab two aggressive sides. selections. The Osiris, worth noting, Bevy Monster arguably won the game on. For OCG, the first half is done. Oleron on her and Horus. And while I'm very happy to see VGS Gods get the Osiris back, Seeing the Horus go the other way is tough. It is going to be a little difficult, but with OCG having a magical and physical hunter, the Osiris should be more impactful in these late game team fights. That Judgment Tether and the anti attack speed potentially, if he builds into like a Witchblade, sure. going to go far. Yeah, Shibalaka is real excited to play, huh? When he gets selected, oh, he yeah, just absolutely. screams. I, uh, I think it's just about the mind pantheon as well, because Chalk <laughs> is also a little excited. That's true. A Willish is always eager. That makes sense. I thought she would. Never mind. Uh, two coming out here. No Susano and no Robin. Across the way, we've got the Guardians being looked at. So Terra will be selected here for the VGS gods themselves. Hades, an interesting it. choice. I like this character too. Totally. Let's talk about Hades. I want to see where it goes first. It's probably going to be in the solo lane, but when you're looking for a little bit of control, the silence into the fear, it catches people off guard when they get blighted, and then all of a sudden they're just randomly feared towards you where you're about to drop that pillar of agony. And this is good beads burning between also the Naja and the Hades. Look for Horus's follow-up. We'll see what happens here as we jump into game number two. BDS Gods, out cold gaming. Out to us. It's Tom Badger and Anatoly on the call here. Doug LeBlanc on the ones and twos. We're getting ready for game number two. And VGS Gods looking to take the set against a very much top carded out cold game. Now, last time Bevy Monster made a big impact at level one on the Osiris because he got a little bit of assistance from his support player, Hacky96, playing the Terra this time around. Not going to be playing the Horus, so not seeing that presence in the solo lane. Instead, trying to make something happen in mid. Any little bit of poke you can do onto just lines on her. He only has two potions, mind you. One health, one multi-pod, and a soul does a lot of basic attack damage when you stack up that heat passive. Extra magical power, extra attack speed. I'm expecting OCG to let this red go through on contested VGS gods. Could look for other areas of the map, though, these neutral objectives between the mid camps. Not going to be the case here. VGS God's still choosing to kind of walk away a little bit. Bevy Monster against the Hades here. So Bevy Monster clearly won last time around. We even saw some uh, early game shenanigans as the proxy farm came out. We'll hold that, though, as Drizzle gets aggressive on the Thorman. There's a dash from Hacky. Stun onto Dragon King. Hacky was trying to slow him with that Terra passive, but the focus was on just line and also the Naja to disengage after the fact. So three on three, favoring VGS still. I like the beats from Drizzle. He was anticipating the stun earlier on, but a great patience from Dragon King just to negate a little bit of that. As we look back here, Raiden on the Oleron, a much different character here. I think that Oleron is more about team fights than anything else. The laning phase can be troublesome for him. Although, uh, uh, not totally, a Shibalanke 
is probably not so threatening. Well, he's not threatening, but he's just going to slowly chip at your health bar. You can hit the archers with the branching bola and guarantee hit whoever it is next to you because you're going to be uh, looking for the damage to build your passive stacks, right? 1,500 damage equals 5 physical power for Marky Sparky. And up right. against Raiden's Merlin last game, he was, a doing, he was doing a decent job of building that passive. I think around the 5-minute mark, he already had 2 stacks of it. And now against the Oleron. He's not getting the same kind of pressure that he was in the last game, but it shouldn't be that big of an issue if it's only a 1v1. As long as it stays the 1v1. Oh, I am famous. Well, that's probably putting it a little bit much. I have said many times that ain't no such thing as a 1v1 in the Smite Pro League. But at the end of the day, really, this lane has been largely the 1v1. So... We'll see if it remains intact or if VGS gods will come over and threaten the life of that Oleron. Worth noting, VGS gods back intact. McSorry previously stepping in for Hacky96, but the starter support player has been back here for game number two. McSorry, man. Fantastic play. If I have to substitute my support player, that's how I want to do it. And if I want to look for aggression in the soul lane, that's how I want to do it. Vitality Fire not having the Available damage output to take down Bevy Monster just yet. Not quite yet either. Bevy Monster didn't have his Osiris passive stacked all the way. He only gets 8% magical mitigations during that passive. I think he had about 5 stacks there, so 5% still assisting him a little bit. And also, I think Bevy Monster started with not only the Health Chalice, but 4 Health Potions. And now, on his first back, he bought three more health potions because the Hades uh, sustain and the clear at the same time. It's hard for physical warriors to out-clear Hades and out-sustain him at the same time. Particularly ones like Osiris. Osiris shows up and wants to be battling. Osiris wants to be in the middle of everything, a la King Arthur, albeit a little bit different. These are gods that don't want to be outside of the wave. When you're against Hades, you want to be outside of the wave so it creates kind of this backwards thought process so totally a little bit of a fight here good control from hacky welcome back to the game ecliptics off of the setup from the support first blood for vgs so totally here's the question that i ask you about that matchup do you do what you're supposed to do quote unquote in fight in the middle of the wave for bevy and hope that you can just outstain it or do you walk away from that soul explosion and look for different or creative waves? You walk away. You have to be creative. You have to separate the wave. So the best way to separate the wave against the Hades is you kind of hug the tower line and you let it build up a little bit and then you drag it on. So you keep the aggro of uh, the minions by hitting the Hades before he's going for the dash or before he walks up to the wave. And by getting the aggro, now... Their melee minions are going to where you are, and you should be positioning at the archers. And when you're separating yourselves all the way up there, uh, your melee minions should more than likely chase their melee minions, mm. unless the Hades also has aggro, at which point the, your minions will go on him. So it's a lot of mind games of how you can control the AI to your advantage. And Osiris should never, no warrior should ever stand in the lane against the Hades. It's all about separating and splitting the wave. And that is that is next level, because a lot of times when you talk to when, when anybody, right, when you start looking at solo lane matchups, it's all about player interaction, taking to the next level and interacting with the minions. Nice wraparound from Drizzle, but unable to really find the carry. Jagia could be the target. There's a brief little teleport and a bad look. Now help from Raiden as he drops an ultimate, but up to the sky goes Thor. On the ground okay. he lands. One, two, three, baby! Double kill for the mid lane mage and one in the pocket of the jungler. Raiden on the run. Drizzle, no stun available. And the damage, not enough just yet. It's only six minutes in, and VGS have already snatched four kills, three of which came in that last exchange. Whether it's the Hunbats or the Thor, Drizzle is making the plays happen, hitting three players yeah. on the Anvil of Dawn. The dream scenario if you're a Thor player. You love to see it there, Ecliptix following up beautifully with that supernova stellar burst combination and this early game is not the most damage out of a soul it's only shoes to focus on her she doesn't have the penetration she wants no bancroft's talent for the extra magical power and it's only going to get scarier for ocg that tried to make that fight on their own terms it was a little tough 
A little tough. Raiden kind of forced into the ultimate, I think. The thought process was there, but the positioning was... Let's say it left a little to be desired. On I the other hand, there. Drizzle and Ecliptics, as you said, the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Good double stun into a double rune. Just to kind of flex on him. Ecliptix wasn't really in range to follow up there. That, still, that tacky going, all right, you guys all saw Victory like crushed it. He did really well. I'm still the guy. I'm just reminding you, I'm still the guy. You guys see the double stun into the double rune? Everybody see that? All right, good. Thank you. Just, just letting you know. Battling for a spot <laughs> probably there. But yeah, this is the kind of support play you want to see, whether it's Vexori or Hacky96, VGS Gods, Frontline, very stable yeah. in that sense. I mean, hell, if, like I said before, if that's the type of you know world we have to be in, look at the depth chart. Look at what happened Pittsburgh Knights in the Pro League, right? They walked away from their mid laner. It's post-trade deadline. They have to go with their coach in the solo lane, hope for the best. If my substitute can play just as well as my starter, that's not a, a bad thing. I'm sure there are some bruised egos somewhere along the way. Sure. But, I mean, it's modern smite. We're seeing some interesting things, and being flexible is the call. Marky? Not in trouble, Dragon King thinking otherwise of that little flank, realizing the dash was still up. We've seen uh, we've seen some flexibility. I really like what we're seeing out of LG. They've got two carry players who are unafraid to play either mid or, or long lane, mm -hmm. just depending on what god and what matchup there is. And that brings me to something I've asked, you know, for a couple of years now. What happens if your smite team just has nine players? That's probably pushing it, but specifically with solo lane, so lane, so matchup dependent, knowledge dependent, right? Well, let's say, you know, we've got a little bit of action around oracles. I'm cold to walk away. Let's say we've got Anatoly, the, the, the mage extraordinaire, and then we've got, I don't know, some other guy that's really good at warriors. Depending on the game, we play different players. It's possible. You like definitely can flex it, just lying narrowly, avoiding that stun trizzle slightly off the mark there. And this is VGS gods still being a bully. Yeah. Whether or not you're flexing gods or players, <laughs> VGS are flexing their guns. This is a great play for OCG, though. This is how you answer back. Ecliptic stays out, but will be zoned. Just Lion gets the kill for the team, and there's Raiden, the secondary after the fact. A nice look. A great ultimate. Man, I was a little bit political last time around. I said it left a little to be desired. So I'll be a little political here, and I won't tell you how much I liked that. It was... It was great. That was a good ultimate from Raiden that time around. No, oh, you gotta be more, you gotta, no, totally, you gotta be a little bit, like, you know, it was in the direction of things I'd like to see. The last time no, I No, that was a good ultimate. Yeah, but last time it was a bad ultimate, and I skirted around the fact. We honor the benefits of the Oleron ult. Oh, is that it? Are we sanctified now? We are in a field. Sanctified fails forever. Oh yeah, Raiden basically made that fight happen. Also, VGS got too frisky. They used their ultimates earlier. Hacky and Drizzle expended their ultimates before the second phase of that team fight, and Alcohol Gaming punishing out VGS that time around. Great redemption play there. For Raiden. Gunter, on the other hand, will have no such redemption. Ouch. 0-2 oh, two and 2 on the Naja. Brawler's first item. It's a lot of damage. 15 penetration is good. Anti-healing a little bit useful up against Terra. Maybe not this early, though. Yeah. Like, Terra healing is... I don't think... Can we look at what Hacky is maxing out? I'm kind of curious. Okay, it's not... Oh, it is actually the monolith that he is leveling first. So, okay. I actually respect him more because of that fact. Some Terras max out other things. Or the sky, landing down, and you want to call this a zone. They're all the way out, boys. VGS were looking at the Gold Fury, but clearly much more interested in going for the fight. Hades groups up, and those protections are insane. A secondary signified field, and out Cold Gaming might be able to snatch the reins of this team fight. Marky goes down, and Gunter is traded out. A two for one in VGS's favor. What an ultimate from Vitality Fire. Unfortunate that there's not much from it, but that silence into the soul explosion there almost eliminates Hacky. That doesn't have much magical defense to really speak of. Only those reinforced shoes as Vitality still healing up alongside Dragon King. 
VGS gods can't get the tier 1 tower, but they do get the better end of the trade. The 2 for 1, and this is important because they kill Gunter Warrior that's already struggling. And as yeah. a Najah that gets behind, that stays behind, allows Drizzle to keep making plays like this where he has absolute freedom to rotate anywhere he wants. There's a lot to be said about Najah being one of the better characters and operating from a deficit. If you're a Kamazots and you're 0 3 and 3, two levels down, <laughs> sorry, bro. Go farm. If you're a Naja, you can still affect the game. You still have Windfire Wheels to flicker players out of the map. Yes. You still have a long-range st uh, stun. And perhaps most importantly, Universe Ring Toss does everything in the game. That said, the amount of freedom that the player has is huge. There's just not a threat. Drizzle, somebody shows up, even level, you gotta always be watching your back. Here, it's more of a concern around team fights. Ooh. So this laning phase can be extended here, and this is how Gunter gets himself back in. Yeah, Marky Sparky going for that rising Jaguar for the poke. I kind of understand why, trying to build that passive right now at 5,500 damage. He's sending a three stack, so he has 15 power, but uncalled for when you don't have vision. Oh, Thor's up, Thor's up, Thor's down, Thor spins, Thor wins, Thor takes away the gold fury. And now, out cold gaming, our gold furious. It doesn't matter how mad they are, because Drizzle is gonna continue to bring it to him. Two here for the jungle Thor. Dragon King Jagia on the run. Bevy meets him on the right with a haymaker. And Raiden gonna go to sleep as well. Nice wall, nice stall, and the gall of it all. Three kills for Drizzle. It's 4 to 11. VGS guards are really punishing OCG for that call. Ecliptic's taking a little bit of poke. Drizzle should be fine. Fatality fire with no dash, but he does have to blink. Oh, no. He blinks. Drizzle is able to hammer away. No problem. Ecliptic's on the run. Four for nothing and stealing away the objective. Thor, baby. VGS gods, they should go buy some lottery tickets. Yeah, well, you know what? They should they should buy lottery tickets for Drizzle because I think that that was out cold gaming played that like amateurs. You can't, the Thor ultimate is what you're looking out for. They're not really respecting the counter engage. Just because, hold that thought though, looking for uh, a kill onto Marky Sparky, but yet again, Drizzle making his presence felt. Dragon King down to 10%. One more time. It's a level 13 Thor. That's the culprit here. He's dodge and weave. Dodge and weave in the mid lane as well. Heavy Monster will kill just like. Trizzle, not going to get killed as well. And the idea that VGS, or sorry, that OCG had earlier was they had a 5 on 4. Right. They killed Marky Sparky, and they went for it. Even, 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 you got to spread for the Thoral. That was real rough, Amundo. Real rough. Gunter with the defensive ult. Bevy Monster still here. And still there, baby. The frustration F6 here. I understand. This should not go through. This should not go through. Because this is your elimination game from the best of three set. If you lose this set, you are conceding your chances at qualifying. Towards the high res expo. You have to play this out. I agree. I agree with the mashing of the F6. I understand how you just go, oh man, this bevy monster, I've chased me, I ulted, what do I do? Surrender vote. And then your team goes, calm down, yeah. we're 4k down, not a big deal. Post fire giant though, Anatoly, that's where I'm gonna go to you. VGS gods up 4,000, not a big deal. Here comes Fatality Fire. Fire Giant kills one of them. And the Fire Giant goes to, to VGS. And so we'll walk away. And I will ask you the question one more time. You're down 4,000. Yeah. Your teammate gets wrecked. You surrender. You go, no, buddy. Calm down. We got this. Now you're down 6,000 and a Fire Giant. How do you talk your team back into it? Especially when this has happened. Yeah, somebody needs to be the voice of reason. Just Lion gets off a great stun as well. Desert Fury to immune the stun, but he can't get away from Ecliptics, unfortunately. Sloppy. Just Lion played that about as well as he could. Yeah, I agree. The up, down as well into the stun after waiting out the beads from Drizzle. I think he would have found the kill there if Ecliptics wasn't there. Yeah. But yeah, there needs to be somebody that, that is the voice of reason.
BGS gods are being bullies, yes, but that doesn't mean OCG are out of this game. They're down about 5,000 gold and now having to play defense against the Fire Giant team. But it's not as though everyone from VGS gods are level 17 and higher. There are some level disparities here and there, just lying three levels behind Ecliptics, two levels behind is Gunter Warrior. But it's about allowing VGS gods to make that offensive play and adapting to it. I like the defensive measures that OCG had. I mean, look at Fatality Fire's ultimate, that one time where he tanked for 10 whole seconds yeah. almost. Yeah. Big plays there. Fatality Fire, you see the one that brings him into it? Yeah, he needs to be present for these team fights. Al Cole should not be even getting poked before Fatality Fire is there. Tier 2 tower giving that up. I don't think that was the correct idea, but because Fatality Fire wasn't there to begin with, you give up the left, but you have to defend the Tier 2. 80s is here and present, so the option has presented itself. Preemptive silence and a hit. He tried to basic attack, silence fear, right. in Bevy into the Tier 2 tower. A little bit inaccurate. M spread out, spread out, spread out! Oh, no! Two players get hit by Drizzle. Thankfully for out cold, he's a little bit early. VGS gods can't make use of it. A poor ultimate there from the Thor, but I think that's that is uh, is why as a, as a as a caster you need to play the game a little bit. When you see five people grouped up like that as a it's Thor, it's instinctual. You are mashing the ult button. Your team's like, we're not in position. You're like. I don't care. You I can't hear you from up here. Get in position is what I'm <laughs> screaming back to them. Like, as I'm landing already <laughs> on the battlefield, as I'm dropping my tectonic rift, those two stunts in succession yeah. could buy your teammates a little bit of time to get in range. And now OCG trying to defend their tier two, three on four. This is a nice look for out cold if they choose to go for it. Ultimate from Raiden will be a great look and Fatality Fire with the combination. But Fatality Fire is taking the damage. Drizzle going to be flanking from the left-hand side, and Drain King's ultimate will be cut short. Knockup's good, but Drizzle's here. That's the damage he can do after the fact. Heal back. They're still in Tier 2. Good adaptations. VGS God's last game would have dove that Phoenix. Yeah. VGS this game realized the mistakes last time when they went too deep beyond that Tier 1 tower in the long lane. This is a team with Fire Giants, so to see this kind of change over the course of only one game, I like how VGS adapted. Maybe that's the conversation about Hacky versus the stand-in support, right? That could be it. He could be the shot caller. Normally, your shot callers early game are your frontliners, but then yep. late game, their backliners normally take over because they have eyes over the entire battlefield, whereas you don't really see the backline if you're the support. Yeah, you, you get a lot of IGLs that'll be jungle at the beginning, right? Because they're the ones rotating a lot, but with the meta, support has been very, uh, very vocal a very important part of what makes your team up. Later on, it becomes all about positioning, as Anatoly said. 20 minutes on the clock, or just about 20 kills on the bat line, or just about. And VGS gods, well, they've controlled more than 15 minutes of this game, that's for sure. It's been all theirs from minute one. Very briefly out cold, we're able to wrestle control of the mid harpies. It was neutral objectives that they were grabbing because VGS were finding invades. Mathy conversation about invades being worth less than what's on your side of the map, but denying experience, etc., etc. Late game, mid game, everything else game is all VGS. And if they take this, they take the set. And there's big picture implications here as well. That's true, because this would eliminate Out Cold Gaming's chances of even qualifying towards High Res Expo. They would be eliminated entirely. Out Cold sneak away the pyro. Beautiful play by Fatality Fire. We'll die for it, though. Good lane. Thor can't reach there. Will show up. Great wall. Dragon King won't be stopped by it. So, average wall. Forces out the sanctified field, so it makes it easier now to go for this fire giant. It won't be the enhanced one that spawns at 30 minutes, but Fatality Fire too far forward for his own good. Trying to steal away a Pyromancer this late. When you're this behind, you if you commit yourself, even at this position of the map, how do you escape without, let's say, an Amaterasu passive or a Giannis portal? Mm. You know, I, I, I liked it. I did like it. If he got the kill onto Ecliptics, exactly, and that's, that's why he dashed in. You know, you know, there, there's a, there is a moment where you can see a player like 
buffer. You can see the brain work. And he goes in, and there's a split second where if he uses his third ability on the pyro, it dies, or the player, it dies. Yes. But there wasn't a world where he could get both. And that split second, we're talking 0.4 seconds, he stutter steps, makes the difference. If he instead, if Fatality Fire instead goes for it with no hesitation, kill or otherwise, sure. But very small windows change things here, folks. And right there was a great opportunity to illustrate that fact. Baby Monster. He might have to ulti out. Never mind. Okay, the slow from the <laughs> obelisk will be yeah. good enough. I'm just saying, like, that is a low cooldown sickle strike. 10% over there on the gladiator shield makes it about four and a half seconds. So you're going to get slowed almost indefinitely. Seven levels above the support, by the way. BGS gods looking for the left side Phoenix and jumping in. The Phoenix already gone. Thor in the air. Where's he going to land? Left side. They're grouped up. Can't make it. The range isn't there. Instead, it lands on the right side and does nothing. A bad play there for sure. A rare one, though. This game has been all Thor all day. Definitely has. Fatality Fire forcing out the beads out of Drizzle, making it hard now for this Thor to really commit into the backline, but he's still useful at range. He can drop that wall, drop the hammer as well. BGS, they got the left side Phoenix, but they're not satisfied with only one. Bevy Monster here keeping eyes on the left as well, so Out Cold can't just stare down one alleyway. Bevy's going to be the target, which should open the door for VGS in the mid lane. Bevy doesn't take any damage. Grouped up on the right side, and here's big outcome from Out Cold. Marky gets one. The Sanctified Field slows it down just a little bit, and there's the disengage two for the carry. Not done yet, though. Up in the sky yet again is going to be Drizzle. But I'm sorry, Marky Sparky taking a by gun to Warrior. Drizzle taking out the Naja after landing. Now in a two on five out cold gaming. They're on their last legs of this best of three set and their chances at high res expo. Yeah, I think those last legs are going to become crutches real quick. Anatoly Drizzle's leading the charge. Bevy Monster with a hair of HP. VGS Gods assaulting the Titan. 10% and that's it. VGS Gods play spoiler and they kick out cold out into the cold. At 24 minutes, 19 to four. This is the greatest performance I think I've seen from VGS yeah. in a long time. Great adaptations between game one and game two. This is a team I think to be respected in the future. Certainly fun to watch here. They figured out what went wrong in game one, that they were victorious and, and then continued to improve in game number two. Always like to see that. But as I said, big picture implications here. Out cold, mathematically out of it. That's right. And as we talk math, we jump into the numbers. Bevy Monster, 4-0-5. Oh, the plays out of this Osiris game one to really zone away Raiden's Merlin. Allow them to win that game. Good early game proxy farming against the blue buff invades. But then game number two, it was all drizzle on the Thor. He hit multiple three-player ultimates early game around this Gold Fury area that really got them the lead. That steal as well. OCG were never really in it with those kinds of calls. Yeah, not at all. VGS, though, making the calls, as we said. Game number one, victorious with a different uh, support player. Now they're standing, their stand-up starter support coming in and making the team victorious. That's right, whether it's Vixori or Hacky96, that frontline presence there on the Terra was a sight to witness. This whole set was a sight to witness. Fantastic stuff so far. Coming up next, we've got more action. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Skillshot, the official production partner of the Smite Console League.